The NIST Cloud Computing Reference Architecture is an attempt to give an extremely high level overview of the roles involved in cloud computing. Before we take a look, let's list a few things that this architecture is not. It's not vendor specific. It's not in how to design your cloud services. It's not a representation of the system architecture of any specific cloud vendor, cloud computing system, or whatever. What it is, is a attempt to provide a technical reference for the United States government agencies and other consumers to understand, discuss, and categorize and compare different cloud services. It will help a consumer to analyze a candidate, a cloud computing candidate for security, interoperability, portability, and reference implementations. That being said, let's take a closer look at this and see what it's all about. So this is the document, the NIST Cloud Computing Reference Architecture. Yeah, so this is a 35 page document and just to quickly scroll through it here, we can see that this edition was created in 2011. So NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And the idea behind it is to promote US economy and public welfare by providing technical leadership for the nations. Let's just jump right into it. This is the diagram that you would see mostly when somebody talks about the cloud computing reference architecture. This is what you're gonna see, this type of diagram. And like we mentioned earlier, this diagram is really just to help give a high level overview of the cloud computing lay of the land. Okay, so in this diagram, this is the one that you're gonna see everywhere. Essentially what you have is a cloud provider in the middle right here. And the cloud provider provides all of these different resources, these different layers that you can think about. Uh, it can provide security and privacy uh, depending on which model you use. Like the SaaS is the most light touch that you would have as a consumer in dealing with the rest of the Layers. When you use an IaaS product, then that's when you're going to be, or you have control over the most of the layers of the cloud provider. Like you set up your own servers, you do installations, you're responsible for a lot more things when you do IaaS versus SaaS. So this is kind of showing you how IaaS, you just, it's a smaller, that's when the cloud provider has a smaller influence on what you do versus SaaS, which the cloud provider is going to take care of most of these things. And then you have the cloud broker, cloud consumer, cloud auditor. So in this document right here, you can see that they have these diff different different areas. And each of these areas, they go here and describe or define what these areas are and how these actors interface with the cloud provider. So if you scroll down here, you can see this different um, different actors and different roles in the cloud ecosystem. And this right here is, is an example of the example of the services that are offered to a cloud consumer, cloud provider, cloud auditor, cloud broker, cloud carrier. I mean, if you're not tired of seeing the word security and security, then you can just start seeing cloud. I mean, that's a little bit better. So if you scroll down, there's um, different types of scenarios, different type of topologies, different ways that the cloud would be can be utilized as a consumer on site cloud, community clouds, out source cloud. So different type of configurations that you could have when you're using cloud services. And also a lot of what this document entails is just how not to screw yourself when you're dealing with, with cloud providers, because you don't want to be locked in. You want, you don't want to set it up in a way that it's not going to be beneficial for you or what you're trying to do in the cloud or your application or whatever you're trying to set up. You want to make sure that the features that you select and the route that you select is going to be the best for what you're trying to do. So as with anything in the government, you want to make sure everything lines up to the objectives. This document will help you make sure that you're lining up with what you need and, and how you're consuming those resources within the cloud. If you're dealing with a cloud broker, if you're dealing with the cloud auditors, make sure that you have all your ducks in a row when it comes time to be audited or billing time comes or dealing with finance or anything. And as a top priority, privacy and recommendation document, because anytime they start using the word should, should do this, should do that, it's recommending proper steps for you. It's not telling you what to do, but this is best practice. They should protect the assured, proper and consistent collection, processing, communication, use and disposition of personal information or personal identifiable information in the cloud. And then lastly, you have the cloud tex taxonomy, which gives you a library of the words that are used inside of cloud computing. First level terms. These are terms that you should be familiar with if you're working in the cloud cloud consumer, provider, carrier. Like the carrier is used to transport the services. So that's at the network layer. Software as a service, all these SaaS, IaaS, PaaS, you should know all of these terms, but that's essentially it. So to summarize, NIST is an entity that is designed to make sure that the government and entities, organizations are using technology in a beneficial way and in a safe way and in a way that promotes the economy and also promotes safety within an American system. The cloud computing reference architecture is a document 
recommend to give you a high level overview of when you're assessing cloud providers to make sure that they have all the components that you need in order to produce the products and services in a safe and in a way that's going to grow the economy and not bring the economy down. Because when you have a lot of financial services, uh, nuclear power plants, things that are just core to what we need as humans in a society to, to live in, the government writes these documents in this to make sure that we're using this technology in a way that is gonna promote that in a beneficial way for society as a whole. That's their interest in writing these documents is to give you some some guidance on how you can frame your program to be beneficial for you and others but that's that's a wrap on this document essentially what i would do print this out you can print this page out uh, just as a reminder when you're starting to look at your program, your cloud security program. Look at these different layers because each one of these has a big story behind it. Cloud consumer, cloud auditor, all of these different entities. The link for this document is in the description. So if you have any questions about this or anything cybersecurity related, then drop a question in the comment section below. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.